like Jay Shramath Ji, Jim and Hilary. Thank yes, you for joining us this evening uh, to share your precious golden memories with Shrimati Ji Nirmala Devi. Um, if I could request Hilary to uh, start and Jim together, your seeking journey. Um, it's it's where were you and what were you doing when uh, you were looking for truth and when you met mother? Could you please uh, talk about it? Jim, if you'd like we, to start, please, yeah. Sure, we had spent about a year and a half in the Indian subcontinent, uh, including two trips uh, up into the Himalayas, uh, one to the base camp and then one on the other side up to, uh, what was the name of that? Uh, Annapurna. Annapurna, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it was in India really that we uh, are seeking really solidified, you might say, and became the only thing that we were looking for. Although we spent a lot of time as tourists and so forth. But we gained a lot of knowledge about uh, the system and so forth, especially at a temple called Madurai, uh, Minakshi Temple in Madurai. They, there was an extensive museum there, and it explained all about Kundalini and chakras and had pictures of all the saints and everything. So we had that basic understanding of it. And as we were traveling, we met a, a Canadian couple. The first time we met them was in Fiji. And the second time was in New Zealand. The third time was in Indonesia. And another time, a couple of times in India. And the fifth time was uh, quite remarkable. We were on a houseboat in Kashmir. Uh, and as, as we were sitting at the table, we look out and we were uh, located on the bank, not out in the lake, the, the Dal Lake. So on the uh, Bund, as it's called, we were sitting there at the table and looked out and on the gang plant walking up was this Canadian couple. And we had never exchanged addresses or told where we were going or what we were going to do. It was all five times we met them, clearly by chance, uh, so-called by chance, right? And uh, eventually they ended up in Cambridge, remarkably. So when that happened, uh, the, the fifth time in Kashmir, we did exchange. It seems to have frozen. Uh, okay, now we are back. Yeah. Okay, we did exchange uh, addresses the fifth time that we met in Kashmir. And so... I kept in contact and we sent some postcards and we kept in contact sort of. And then eventually he uh, ended up in Cambridge. Uh, Brian and Darlene were their names. They were from Canada. So if I could just ask what year that was and the time of the year and how old were you guys? Because this kind of sounds like uh, what kids still do, uh, the gap year travel. Was it something akin to it or different? Uh, we started in San Francisco, went to Los Angeles, then to Tahiti, and spent about seven months in the South Pacific, right. and then continued traveling. So the, the last time we saw them in Kashmir would have been in probably 1977. Right. We, okay. we would have been in our late, well, early 30s. Mm -hmm. Okay. 31, okay. 32. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you. Right. And uh, so that's how we ended up in Cambridge. Um, so like I said, we had this knowledge of Kundalini. And actually, we had read a book by a false guru, actually. But it was entitled Kundalini. That was the name of the book. Yes. And so it was quite frightful, actually. I don't recommend it to anyone. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it kind of set the tone that if... If that was real, and that was what we had to go through, that yeah. we were willing to do it. But it was uh, obviously the wrong path. So anyway, um, then we got to Cambridge. I got a job uh, with that same fellow on the working on the M11 motorway, building the motorway. Wow. 
and uh, stayed with him for a while. And then uh, eventually in a, uh, a house came, became available at uh, 59 Sturton Street in Cambridge, about 460 square feet, two up, two down terrace house. Uh -huh. So then Hillary came down. So I continued working on the motorway. Unbeknownst to me, uh, yes, so um, I was avidly seeking and um, tried a few things when we came back to England from our, you know, tour. Yes. Um, but none of them worked out, you know, of what I was looking for. Although some of the signs were there of like, you're going to meet someone, you know, or don't read so many books anymore. You're going to find out what you want, you know. And uh, eventually I was looking uh, through the local newspaper that used to come through the door advertising like, OK, um, rummage sales. I think I remember the court in England. And because we were very poor, and we lived in this rented house and I was just looking for something to put in the house. OK, <laughs> and there it said Kundalini Awakening wow. and, a phone, and a phone number. I went. OK, <laughs> so I called and I spoke to this lady called Anna, who lived in Water Beach, about maybe five miles from Cambridge. We made a time for us to meet and I took the bus out there. And she met me at the door and, uh, you know, during that afternoon, she told me all um, about Sahaja Yoga. Yeah. And um, I was a little bit scared because of what Jim said, the book we'd read. So I wasn't sure what I was right. in. Um, but uh, eventually she sat me down in front of a, a picture of Shumataji. And actually next door to the picture of Shumataji was a picture of Jesus. Now, I wasn't an avid Christian, never went to church, but I was, you know, brought up with knowing about Jesus. And it actually yes. gave me a feeling of comfort yes. at that time. Yes. And so I sat there and she stood behind me and she worked on me. And then eventually she said, uh, what are you feeling? And I was feeling this cool breeze on my hands. And I thought, well, that's really a very strange thing. I don't know how I'm going to tell her this. But, and she said, no, that's great. That's what you should be feeling. Wow. And, you know, and then um, after that, um, she gave me the little pink photograph of Shumata you know, the original picture of Shumata Yeah. And nothing much else. And uh, she said, she might, she's in India right now, but I'll let you know when she comes back from India and she'll be uh, giving a meeting at Caxton Hall. So I said, all right. And I came back on the bus and uh, came back to my house and didn't tell Jim because really being a man, he was looking for a, ma a male guru, okay? I'm not sure how he was going to accept a lady, okay? Yes. <laughs> but I kept this picture very carefully in a book, you know? Yes. And then I got a little bit sidetracked because Jim's parents came from America for about a month to tour, you know, Scotland, Ireland, England, and so on. Mm -hmm. But I took, remember taking the picture with me inside a book, actually. Wow. And then uh, Anna called me and said, uh, Shumashji is back in England. There will be a meeting at Caxton Hall, so-and-so time. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to tell Jim. And I showed him the picture of Shumashji. And I said, uh, I want to go and see this lady in London. And I don't want to seek any more until I see her. And I ah. said, would you be interested? And he said, yes. And so oh. then we went down to Caxton Hall and met Shumashji. Wow. So what was that first meeting with uh, Srimataji like? I mean, first of all, you have this uh, anticipation or the expectation that, you know, traditionally a guru is a male uh, and there's Srimataji. Uh, and, and so, you know, being human, we have our sort of expectations and preconceived ideas and notions about things. So what was your first meeting with uh, Srimataji at Caxton Hall like? And when was it? October 29th, 1979. Wow, okay. And uh, we went into the hall and Anna was there. And she said, sit in the front row because then, you know, you can see better and hear better and uh, Srimataji can put attention on you. And then, I wasn't the type of person that liked anyone putting attention on me, but, you know, I complied with Anna. And so we we sat there and I, I looked around and slowly the hall started to fill up with people very much 
not like me, I thought at the time. Nice. Uh, at the time, I was, um, well, a hippie, really. And I had very long hair and a long beard and uh, all that. And uh, the people I was looking at behind me were all dressed in suits and uh, just didn't look like me at all. And I thought, these are these people must, might have come into the wrong room because they don't look like seekers. To me, this was my state of mind at the time, right? But at that time, uh, Douglas Fry came onto the stage with a boom box and he played some music from Ali Akbar Khan, who I was familiar with. So that was pleasant. I said, okay, I'm gonna ignore all these people and just sit and meditate. So I did. And I had a very, very, very deep, peaceful meditation. There was a photograph of Sri Maharaji on the chair on the stage. So it started to fall into place. Then uh, Gavin Brown came up onto the microphone and he said, I'd like to uh, offer a little introduction before Sri Maharaji comes, which he did. And my initial reaction again was, this guy's in a three-piece suit and what does he know? <laughs> but by the end of his talk, I was really impressed and amazed. And I thought, I, I can remember consciously thinking, wow, this guy, and I knew that he wasn't just talking. I knew that he knew, if you know what I mean. And so I said, if if it's just the guy that's introducing her, what, she, what, what must she be like? So then uh, I noticed that all the people started uh, standing up, starting at the back and all the way up to where I was in the front, where he was. And she came on the stage, and the first thing she said was, I bow to all the seekers of truth. And I thought, wow, that's me. <laughs> that's me. What, what message, you know, is she going to give? And the message she gave, it was like answering every question I had ever had or was having at the time about spirituality and seeking and the different religions and incarnations and all of that. She explained very simply and very succinctly. Uh, then that the talk ended and then she asked the, some of the sad yogis to go down and work on people. So Douglas Fry was the one who worked on me and uh, Felicity was with him, with her. And uh, I was having a very nice meditation until Douglas said, what are you feeling? And my thought was, I'm feeling fine until you interrupted me. But then he said, oh, okay. And then I meditated some more. And then he said, do you smoke? And of course, I smoked all kinds of things. So I didn't want to admit it because I was very paranoid in those days. And so I said, no. And he said, hmm, that's very interesting. And he said it just like that so that I knew that he knew that I was lying. <laughs> and at the same time, the left side of my neck started to get red hot and it got hotter and hotter and hotter. And then I heard him say something, ah, now it's better. And it was, and it started to cool and got cooler and cooler and cooler. And then I think Sri Mataji motioned to you about to feel the top of my head. Mm -hmm. And she did. And uh, what did you feel? I felt very cool. And it was more verifying for me to feel it on top of somebody else's head uh, than my own. And actually, I found that to be the case even now with people. That when you ask them to feel on somebody else's head other than their own, for some reason, it resonates more with them. Yes. And um, all I remember at the end of Shumashti's lecture was she said, you will not be thinking now. And I realized, I'm not thinking. That's remarkable. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you had achieved thoughtless awareness just like that.
but I didn't realize I wasn't thinking until she mentioned it. <laughs> amazing amazing um a very beautiful meeting with uh, the Adi Shakti herself uh and having read uh you know what you did about Kundalini and everything uh how was it because it's a little bit of a mental question but you, you kind of you kind of uh, are, are pensive a bit hesitant but yet the seeking you know it takes over everything so that first meeting with shimatsuji and your kundalini rising um because um you had been to these temples museums you knew more about the chakras and kundalinis than your no your average uh, seeker in the west particularly mm -hmm. in india would be aware of so what was it like you, you, when when Shmataji raised the Kundalini, so you felt the vibrations uh, on top of the the cool breeze. What was it like for for you both individually when uh, when you got to your realization from Shmataji? Um, go ahead, Jim. Maybe you can feel that in right now. Uh, it was the answer. Yeah, it's just. It's just Thoughtless is that silence and the joy. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah, I mean, it was what we were looking for, you know. Exactly. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We were almost dumbfounded that we found that, you know. Yes. And yes. it took a while to process that that we had found it, you know. Because yeah, we yeah. had been looking in so many directions and had gone to so many yes. false gurus and ashrams in Haridwar, Rishikesh, Lakshman Shula, yes. and those places. We had been to a lot of people and had checked them all off the list. And I mean, I pull my ears, but we were going to check this off the list and then move <laughs> on to a Zen Buddhist retreat. Wow. We couldn't check it off. <laughs> it checked us off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Amazing, yeah. amazing experience that you sort of had your list of, of things to check out and then Sad Yoga or Srimataji found you like you know the pearls yeah. scattered all over and then she strung us all on this beach to be her children as Sad Yogis. Um, so I mean Srimataji had a very nice um, sort of a personal um, approach to things the way she nurtured us I mean I'm saying us but it's actually you both and the other yogis of those time because uh, Shamashi spent like 14 years in England and the way she actually um, treated uh, everyone, the Sahaja Yogis here, is completely, completely beyond uh, imagination, you know, like you would actually cradle a little baby and, you know, the baby steps and with such love and such informality that always gets me because being an Indian, it's, it's, you know, the goddess, the Adi Shakti is, is on a pedestal there. So there's always that sort of certain degree of um, protocol that, that, that we, it goes without saying, but to see that the love of mother for her children is just so pure joy, such bliss. What was it like being in a company after, after your realization? What what was the things that you did after that? Well, um, I think the we went to Chelsham Road, I think, and um, uh, Shimataji, uh, not Chelsham Road, sorry, we went to Dolly's Hill. And Shimataji used to come there on, on a Sunday. And uh, I uh, remember that she worked on both of us the first time we went there. And... Uh, I remember she said to me um, something like, um, no, I asked mother, that was it. I said, mother, what should I do now, you know, that we have realization? And she said to me, well, you wanted to save the world, isn't it? And at that point, there was nothing. It was like thoughtlessness. There was, it, there was nothing more to say, you know, um, I think she also said, you have the light now, and what do you do with the light? You give that light to others. 
and that kind of went hand in hand with the fact that Hillary had actually said, you know, we want to save the world, we want to change the world. And that was the attitude in those days in the 60s. I mean, that was the good part of the hippie movement was that people wanted to change uh, for the better. So that was nice. And she worked, like Hillary said, she worked on both of us. And then after, um, after that, uh, one of the yoginis came with a plate of food. Then it was time to eat. And so the first lady that came, I said, oh, thank you very much, but I'm vegetarian because it was a chicken curry. So she said, oh, and then she went away. And then another yogini came with probably the same plate. And <laughs> I said, uh, oh, thank you very much, but I'm vegetarian. So the second time, Sri Mataji, who was sitting watching everyone, saw this and she said, Jim, why aren't you eating? And I said, well, I'm vegetarian, Sri Mataji. And she says, well, yes, but I made it. <laughs> and I said, I'll have that. <laughs> so 12 years of vegetarianism, that was it. Yes. So, and this is sorry, this incident is at Dollis Hill Ashram, the photo yes. that we're yes. yes. oh, that's, okay. that's that's the picture, yeah. yeah. Amazing. And then um the third time I think we met Shimatichi was the Advent Sunday, the uh, Guru Puja, uh, where she declared who she was, who she is. After that there was um you know. It answered every every seeking, every yearning you ever had, you know. And when she said that, yeah, that was like the icing on the top of everything, you know, to hear that. When you say how was it when you were with Sri Mataji, it was like being in bubble wrap. You felt so secure, so protected, so loved. Uh beyond any other person you'd ever met. And she kept you in that bubble. And you, I mean, there, like you say, the protocol of the goddess, I mean, we were so far away from that, that she allowed us to be that way in order to cleanse us and keep us. And uh, it was amazing. After the, the declaration and there were two people there. There was Sri Mataji, the mother. And then when she made the declaration, <laughs> there yeah. was the goddess. Yeah. If yeah, you wow. listen to that, she's in a different space. She's in a yes. different voice. She's Absolutely. in a different power. Yeah. And it's really remarkable. After that, uh, there was uh, Gregoire's book signing. And she gave us all copies uh, and signed our our personal copies. So that, that was pretty extraordinary as well. Wow. And is this a Guru Puja in 1981 we are talking about? Uh, December. December 79. December, December 79. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Amazing. I think the second. Yeah, second of December. Wow. Amazing. That is absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Um. So, um, from 79, they, uh, we move on to 1980, let's say, and there is a photo that you have shared with us, which was the English weddings, ah. probably at uh, Chelsham Road. I'll show you the photo here. I think that was 81. Though. No, no, this is a different oh, wedding, okay. Oh, okay. And, and I can't recognize who's getting married I think there. it's Dawn and Tony actually. there's Pat and Greshna here is it Pat and Greshna yeah that's Pat and Greshna here oh, it's oh. Pat and Greshna. all right okay okay yeah that's um I think that's Mark but and that's probably you yes that is brown yes. suit and um, Hillary you would be isn't that Pat no that's you there yeah and i'm not sure whether i'm in the photograph for some reason okay, I think okay. I am. Yeah. it's a very joyful occasion from yes. uh, oh, from oh the yeah photo. tremendous yeah yeah 
Okay, amazing. Um, tell us something uh, about um, about how the transformation on a day to day basis that you felt after after your realization and those you know Shramataji worked and you chicken curry from Shramataji cooked by Shramataji. My God, it's a dream <laughs> for <laughs> people like us. Isn't it? <laughs> so. What what was it like and the progress, please? After I got my realization at Caxton Hall, I we went home. I shaved my beard. I cut my hair. You oh. you just saw my mod style. That was the in between style. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually, I had some marijuana plants growing in the back garden that I <laughs> I uprooted. <laughs> I gave to someone I knew at the health food store that we used to work at part-time. <laughs> and uh, he was so impressed by that, that I had done that, that he threw him away and got his realization. So that was, that was the start. That is absolutely fantastic. I, what and, you want yeah. I'm sorry. And in fact, that was why that interview uh, in Cambridge with the BBC took the tone that it did, because the interviewer came up to me and said, uh, tell me something about this Sri Mataji. What has she done for you in your life? Mm -hmm. And I, I just said, well, you know, what I just told you, I as soon as I met her, I knew it was the truth. And I knew that this was my guru. And I went home and shaved and uh, did all those things, neatened up and forswore all kinds of alcohol, drugs, anything that I've been doing before. I never since that day have yes. tried again. So wow. she said, oh, really? Well, what kind of drugs were you into? And I, <laughs> I gave her a list. <laughs> <laughs> and as reporters are, it was sensational. That was the type of yeah. thing people want to hear. Yeah. And it was sensational. So that's how she led the interview. But uh, yeah, that was the transformation for me. And then I read the Advent in one sitting. Wow. <laughs> and uh, said, yeah, this guy is, was just like me. And this is what's happened with him. And, you know, I, I shared that with, with Gregoire, really. Amazing. Amazing that you could just read it in one sitting. Wow. And what was it like for you, Hilary, then, um, you know, from uh, finding Shamatji with Anna to going to meet her in the uh, Caxton Hall program, then to Dollis Hill and being a homemaker? Uh, what was the journey for you like? I'm assuming you were a homemaker. Yes, well, I was actually... Um... At that time, I think I was working at the health, health food shop on a okay. basis, yeah, by the name of Arjuna, which is uh, kind of interesting since mm. we came to the land of Krishna afterwards. That's it, yeah, from Arjuna's health food it was shop. A, it was a co-op, and there were 16, uh -huh. 16 members. Wow. And, and it was called Arjuna. Amazing. And the, they were all seekers that worked there amazing. So, uh, amazing but i was working on the motor like uh, motorway so yeah mm -hmm. eventually after meeting sri Mataji, i got a, a government sponsored course in carpentry and so i was i was doing that for a while wow amazing we started doing programs in cambridge almost immediately what was it like? What was it like? Because uh, it, this this is very um, important that we share this light uh, with the others. So having found this, this feeling of, wow, we've met, mm -hmm. we've arrived where we've been, you know, always looking for, seeking for so long. How did you, what was it like having the public programs in a city like Cambridge, in a sort of in a place like Cambridge, which is kind of, you know, it's it's a little bit um, 
much. What should we say? People are very um, sort of busy in their own state of affairs and things. So what was it like? We started, well, what happened was uh, there was a fellow, an Irishman, but uh, living in London, who came to Cambridge to do a course at the technical uh, college, not at the university, but the technical college. His name was Don Devine. Uh -huh. And he gave self-realization to the lady that Hillary got it from, Anna. So that's how that happened. At about the same time, there was a fellow called Ian Lewis, who was from Cambridge and had a lot of friends in Cambridge, but had been living in London. And I assume that he uh, got his realization in London. And so he came up and actually got a job at the... Uh, the cafeteria of the hospital uh, called Adam Brooks Hospital. And his best friend was working there as well, as, as well as some other people. So he gave self-realization to his best friend, who was Luis Perez Salas. And then the two of them gave realization to uh, their two girlfriends at the time, who they later married. Uh, as well as several relatives. Uh, well, uh, Lewis's best, uh, one of Lewis's good friends was called Gerardo uh -huh. uh, Bell, last name Bell. And then uh, the, the two of them then gave realization to uh, Gerardo's sister and a couple, another couple called uh, Rodrigo and Wendy. So that's how pretty much it started. And then Hillary and I came uh, and then quite a few people obviously started getting self-realization and the collective built. So we first started meeting at a at the Methodist church. And ironically, that's where Srimadji had her first program. Well, actually, I take that back, her second program because her first program was arranged by Arno de Calibermaten when he and his future wife, uh, Maria Amelia, were studying English as a second language in one of the language institutes in Cambridge. So he gave a, he actually uh, arranged a program and Sri Maharishi came and according to them, nothing much happened after that. So uh, that was the original beginning. Okay, uh, thanks for sharing that. Um, there is a, a, a picnic with Srimataji and there's also your first India tour. Which came first? Was the picnic before the India tour or? Which picnic is that? Uh, in, the in picnic, Paris. In Paris, yeah, in the picnic in Paris with Srimataji, yeah. I think that came afterwards. I think the India okay. tour was 8081 and I think the picnic was 81, I think, later on in 81. Aha, uh -huh. okay, fantastic. Would you like to share with us your uh, India tour? I mean, e India wasn't an unfamiliar place for you guys, uh, having been there so many times. How was it, um, this India tour, different from when you were there before in all parts of India? Well, we were with Srimataji. <laughs> 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 every day for nine weeks yes, yes wow every day for how much time nine, nine weeks. weeks yes it was a long tour that year yeah. amazing gosh that there, is there were 30 about, about 30 of us between 30 and 40 but, um, mostly australians but there were about probably eight or ten of us from england as well it's quite a um, quite a lot of people there from this photo mm -hmm. that you finally shared with us. Right, uh, that includes a, a few Indians. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, maybe there were fifty, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So, what are the? Is there any 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 um memories that stand out for you guys on this nine week tour with Shimatsuji? Wow, amazing. What? Several. <laughs> Several. <laughs> Please share it was, with us. It was an incredible tour. And uh, one thing 
the first thing I'll talk about that stood out was you've probably seen the photograph where she's sitting on a stage, uh, on the stage itself, cross-legged, and uh, there's a there are rays coming towards her, like a rainbow almost. And if you've seen the whole series of those photographs, eventually she puts her hands up, and the next photo in the series, there's no rays coming. And so she explained that to us, that there was a Muslim saint buried nearby and that he wanted to somehow uh, offer her something, and that was all he could offer. But uh, finally, she put her hand up and said, enough, enough. Yes. So that was one extraordinary thing. We, we didn't know it at the time, of course, because we didn't see the uh, developed uh, film. So later on, when we saw that, we knew, and she explained it too when we when we saw it together. So that was one incident. Another incident was in a place, and I'm not sure I have the pronunciation right, but uh, called Caduz. It was on the same tour, and she gave a program, and the, it it was like what like what a former Christian might envision Christ. Uh, with the multitudes, right. uh, Sermon on the Mount or something. It was like that. There were people everywhere. They were up sitting on fences, sitting on the ruins of old temples. Um, wow. One estimate was 6,000. And, you know, I don't dispute that. And after the program, she, well, during the program, and, and this we learned later as well, she had told the people, I know this guru has come to your village and he's given you all these black leather straps and you've got them all around your neck. And that's why the Vishuddhi is uh, so negative. She said, I want you all to take these straps off and burn them and get rid of them. Okay. Well, we didn't know that. Most of the talk was in the language Mar Marathi, uh, Marathi, Marathi. So, and then she also said, and by the way, I know it's a big drought here. I know that's your main concern. And if this guru is so special, let him try and stop the rain I'm going to bring as soon as the program is over. <laughs> there wasn't a cloud in the sky. Wow. When the program was going on. And this we also didn't know until later. So the program's over. Sri Maharaji comes down from the stage. Those of us on the tour, the Westerners, formed a circle around her because there were literally thousands of people who would want to come up and touch her feet and so on. Uh, and so we formed a ring around her and went all the way to the car. I opened the door for her. She got in the car. And the first drop of rain hit the hit the top wow. of the car. We all got drenched, and the people were rejoicing. And the next thing we saw was a big bonfire, and all of these leather black strings were going into the bonfire. It was incredible. It was Amazing. incredible. That is absolutely incredible. Wow! And this is nineteen eighty. 19, well, uh, the, la the last week in December of 1980 until the 1st of March, the tour ended. Yeah. So the Ganapati Pule wasn't there that time, wasn't it? Because yeah. um, that came much later. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. That is just pure bliss just listening to. No, we went to Bordy that year. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there were probably, I would say, a hundred people. Yeah, the Bodhi the, seminar is pretty. Right, including all the all of the Indians who came. Yes. Will be about a hundred of us. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So, um, I mean that it's it's how Shramataji's sort of Sahaj family is growing slowly, isn't it? From how mm. she started with just seven yogis in 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 the in the uk to you know a handful in india to now a hundred in in 1980 mm. um it's it's amazing what sort of routine did you guys have are you like very disciplined with your meditations and i mean um the comforts of um 
matter and body constantly sort of trying to uh, entice you to oh let's just get how get up half an hour later and meditate then or something like that what was it like you mean on the tour on the tour yes we didn't have much choice in the matter <laughs> we got up when they said get up we ate when they said Okay. So we've been traveling. Get on the bus. Yeah, we've been traveling for um five years um before we came back to England, you know, and a year and a half in India. We were younger. I mean, to sleep on the floor for us then or to eat when we needed to was nothing, you know. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, amazing. But amazing. That that is absolutely amazing. Um, there was a very um a, a nice incident that uh that that uh, you had shared and i can't quite pin it down at this uh, moment so the picnic in paris was was it when you came back to england yes um it was in 1981 i think um i think it was one of the first programs in in paris and uh she, uh, actually I wasn't sure whether she'd go or not and then I checked on the vibrations and it, it was one of the coolest times you know I felt whether I should do something mm -hmm. and uh, so there were about seven or eight of us we had a van and for some reason I was the only one who could drive it I don't remember why the others couldn't but I ended up driving this van and then we found out that we'd be following Sri uh, oh, to wow. Paris and uh so we all headed off, you know, towards the, um, you know, English Channel. And uh, we actually, if I remember rightly, went on a hovercraft. And then uh, we arrived in France. And uh, before we got to Paris, um, Shamashi decided that we needed to have a, a picnic. And so we went into the local supermarket there and bought all the things that were necessary for a picnic. This is before the one that you're showing, actually, okay. on the screen. And... Uh, it was so joyful. We were there out in the nature. And I remember thinking, I'll pick some flowers for Shimatiji. And the only thing was some humble dandelions. But I picked them and had this big bunch. And I gave them to Shimatiji. And it was so joyful. It was like being a child, you know, just giving your mother some 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 flowers. And she was very gracious, of course, and accepted them. <laughs> And uh, then, actually, I'll tell you an amusing little thing that happened on the way. Um, yeah. I forget who was driving uh, Shumashji. Um, might have been David Sparrow, but I'm not 100% sure. But you know how in England you drive on the left? Yes. And in France, they drive on the right. So yeah. we get to the roundabout, and we're following Shumashji, right? And we're going around the roundabout as if we're in England, like making abandon, right? We're going left to right, left to right. And so we're following, you know, we're going around and around and around. Suddenly realize, okay, we're going the wrong way, but, you know, mother's obviously working something out. <laughs> and then we proceed on. And uh, then uh, during our time in Paris, um, at some time, uh, Shumataji, um organized for us to have a picnic, um, you know um what you're seeing now okay yes. and uh yeah it was it was so this is you here is it that's me there yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay yeah that oh, was amazing a very time. very enjoyable very exciting time driving a van around <laughs> it's yeah, <on> the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, we, where we, did you stay we stayed with in marie's uh, apartment there and uh -huh. she, she was there as well and um so some people, I don't remember what I did, but slept in the, in the same room as her. And uh, so it was a, a very wonderful time, yeah. So what was it like every day sort of being with Shimataji, you know, waking up with Shimataji, probably in her bedroom or or, or in the house? Um, what was it like? It's like Jim said, you, you were in a bubble, you know, yeah, yeah. and uh, you would have just waiting for her to wake up and then what she would say and what she was wanting to do. And, you know, it was just so exciting and wonderful. And Yes. It, you yeah, were just I've, home and you didn't think about anything else, you know, you're just in the moment there with her, you know. Yeah. Yes, yes, true. That is so true. Oh, wow. Um. Okay, uh, from picnics to shuddy camps, there's a couple of stories uh, that uh, that you might like to share, Jim. 
and Hillary, you know, when uh, Shamataji did the TV interview. Um, um, but also she met the the scholar uh, of Sanskrit and Pali um, who who was a realized soul. Would you like to talk about, share your experience, uh, please? I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I would recommend anyone. Yes. I, I asked him once, is there anything you're working on now, any new text or any translation? And all he said was, uh, everything I have ever wanted to say is in my introduction to the Upanishads. Wow. And so I would recommend anyone. And that's that was really, if you read his introduction in Bhagavad Gita, uh, the one in Upanishads is more complete. And, and he uh, said that. So wow. especially for Western seekers, or Christian yes. uh, oriented seekers, but really for anyone, how he weaves the different religions into one thing, using one example to explain another example, using uh, a page from the Bible to explain what Krishna was saying. And yes. you know, it's remarkable, but yeah, we had arranged a program this would have been our fourth fourth program. Right. Uh, that would that would have been 1984. So we had programs in 80, 81, 82, and 84. So we had arranged the program in Cambridge on the night. Uh, we had arranged for the inter interview in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, we did the interview. The BBC interview, the regional BBC interview, yeah. Right, and that would have been the, the following morning after the uh, the Cambridge program. And then after the interview, uh, Sri Mataji wanted to uh, come back to the house. So we came back, she went upstairs, and like I explained, just 450 square foot little house we had. And she wanted to take a nap. So she uh, went into the bed and then she called for me to go upstairs and I went up and she said she wanted me to rub her feet because they were very hot from standing and uh, the traffic and the car and the interview and walking and everything. And I must say her feet were very, very warm when I first started rubbing them. Wow. And within five minutes, they had gone completely cool. And, and I went thoughtless as I was rubbing her feet. It was in a, a, a tremendous experience. You were in a different dimension. Wow. So then I went downstairs and we heard that you should never wake Sri Mataji, right? That she'll, no matter what the agenda is or a plane to catch or anything, you never wake Sri Mataji. So we didn't. And then I, I had a watch in those days and I was looking at my watch and I was going, oh, no, because we had scheduled to the meeting was with Juan Mascaro. On top of that, we had a program in Norwich, 60 miles away as well that evening. So there was just no way I was thinking that we were going to get get it all in. And But then on the other hand, that's Sri Mataji's plan, too. So when she woke, she said... Uh, Oh, I slept so well. So I slept so well, but it must be a bit late, isn't it? And I said, yes, Sri Mataji, I don't think there'll be time to go and see Juan Mascaro. And she said, oh, what a shame. She said, you better go and phone him then, which I did. And I must say, I was so disappointed. And he's he was as well. You could tell over the phone that he was very disappointed. And he said, oh, well, maybe maybe another time. And I said, yes, perhaps another time. So I said, well, all right, goodbye. And went back to Sri Mataji and said, what did he say? And I said, um, well, he sounded a bit disappointed. And she said, you better go and phone him back. After all, he's an older man. We'll go and see him. Aww. And he did. And so we, we went out, and uh, he lived in Cumberton? Um, I think so, yeah. Cumberton, about 10 miles from Cambridge. 
And uh, he, he met her at the door of his thatched cottage, simple, very simple thatched cottage. And he was standing in the doorway with a white rose that he had picked from his garden. And he held this rose in both hands while he sang, Swami Gamata Supita Tomeva Swami Gabandu Sasaka Tomeva. And he sang the whole, we knew that by heart because we used to sing that after the RT in, the, in those days. Ah. Can you imagine? There were, you know, the Sad Yogis were just standing back in amazement watching this. So not only did he do that, but it exhibited the fact that he believed in her. Yes. Right? Uh, it's a long story, but he had once told the Beatles, and there, there was quite a, a rapport with George Harrison, but he had told them about the Maharishi to get, get rid of them. So he knew about false gurus, and he knew it was false. Yeah. So he knew immediately. He knew immediately. Uh, on the phone, mm. when I said, I would, you know, uh, I would like you to meet Sri Mataji, he knew immediately. So that was that. They went inside. They sat by his um, his fireplace where he burned peat, not even coal, but he burned peat <laughs> to keep warm. Right. Uh, sitting there. And uh, we stood back. His wife brought us tea. And they talked and talked. And at one point, uh, well, in the beginning, Sri Mataji said that, you know, she should, she should sit on the floor because he only had one chair, I think, something like that. Or, or there was a chair and a stool or something. And he said, no, no, no. And he sat on the floor and offered Sri Mataji the this, this seat. So that was something. Um, then it went on. And I mean, the vibrations were yeah. incredible, really incredible. We had been to a lecture, Hillary and I, and this fellow, Don Devine, prior to that. I mean, maybe a year prior to that, where we had seen him give a lecture. And uh, that's another story. But we had seen the aura, the halo around him. And mm -hmm. it was unmistakable. We confirmed it with each other after the meeting. So uh, pretty impressive being there with Sri Mataji and he. At, after we left, we got in the car and I thought for sure we're not going to get to Norwich in time for this program. This is, we must have been there hours. This is yeah. the way it felt. And on the way, she uh, turned back to us and said, you know, it's very rare that such a great scholar would be a realized soul. Yeah. So, so beautiful. Uh, How old was he at this point of meeting? Uh, he would have been in his early 80s, yeah, I would I say, so. early 80s. Yeah. The most honestly humble man I've yeah. ever seen. Yeah. Amazing. And needless to say, we did get to Norwich on time, just as the clock struck seven, <laughs> which was the time we were supposed to be there. <laughs> I went around to open the door for Sri Mataji and the clock tower started chiming seven times. And she looked up and she said, how many times have I told you people were beyond time? <laughs> <laughs> she laughed. <laughs> yes, actually, uh, this, this is... Um... Um, I, I read this email um, incident you shared about being beyond time. Her mother says, you know, it's our jogis are beyond time, Kalati. Uh, and we forget on a day-to-day -day basis, at least I do. So this morning I was running late for work and I thought, no, 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 I'm going to test this out. <laughs> like to be on time. And I was on time. And it, I mean, uh, there's roadworks and everything, but somehow it was just very, very smooth. Everything was, the lights were green and you just could go. But it's not an everyday story, not till you actually remind yourself, probably. Mm -hmm. Do you find that still? Oh, yeah, you have to remind yourself, yes. Because we all get caught up in day to day things, don't we? Yeah. That we think are important. <laughs> <laughs> 
so in 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 so many years of uh, you know so many countries so many yogis you've uh, spent time with what would your uh, advice be for the seekers in the future or um, any sort of advice wisdom things that you wanted to share with with us well i think just to follow what shamatiki always says to meditate yeah and to get into thoughtless awareness for whatever amount of time that is i think yes and i think yeah. she always emphasized that over and over again mm -hmm. just meditate true true that is that is the most important mm -hmm. um connection with shamatiki is yes it? yes if you don't make that then you know all the other things that you do um yeah. There was an instance of the goblin. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, <laughs> the goblin. Would you like to share that, please? Uh, what was it all about? It, it started in a public program in Cambridge. And this fellow, I call him Clive. I can't remember what his name was. And uh, Clive had been involved in a false guru. And it, it was called Est, E-S-T. And the way he explained it was really sinister. He said they only meditated in the dark. And they, he himself felt that it was very sinister, but he was in it. And so he was going to continue in it type of thing, you know, stubborn. Mm. But, but he was still seeking. He came to our program. I'm not sure he got his realization at our program. But I mm. told him about Sri Mataji and would he like to go down and meet her? So we went together, I think, yes, on the on the train or yeah, yeah we went with him yeah we went with him and so we got to the program and i worked on him and i could not clear his left for shooting to save my life it just went on and on and my left for shooting was getting really caught up as well so i'm not sure he got realization there either uh at the program but at the end of the program when Sri Maharaj was leaving, we, I think it was at the Hampstead Town Hall, upstairs room. And we were walking down the stairway and for some reason, Hillary and I and this fellow Clive and Sri Maharaj were the only ones on the stairway. The rest of the Sajyogis and, and the people were still back in the room. And she turned around, she was in front of us, and she turned around and she looked straight at Clive and she said, you get out of here right now. I'm not kidding, get out of here. You don't belong here, get out. Can you imagine? And so, you know, we continued on, we went downstairs, she got in her car, the rest of the yogis came down and she left. And then I turned to Clive and I said, look, I don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, he said, no, you don't have to explain a thing. He said, for the entire program, this goblin, is what he called it, was sitting on my left shoulder. And it, and it was very menacing and I couldn't get rid of it until she said, get out. And it got out. <laughs> Amazing. Incredible. Never saw him again. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was rid of the <laughs> goblins, but now yeah. he was enjoying life oh, <laughs> in his own way. Oh, wow. Um, okay, just see the vibrations. Does that ring a bell? Ah, uh, yes. So oh, yeah. Go on, then. Go on then. Tell us about it, please. Well, you asked me, actually, so you probably should tell the story, right? Yeah. Uh, we were on the train. There were uh, this lady I mentioned before, Roxana, who eventually actually married Don Devine, the one who <laughs> uh, she was with us. Hillary and I were sitting in one seat, and it was the type of train carriage where the seats face each other. So Shri and Roxana were in one seat and Hillary and I were in the other and we were facing each other and we were riding along and Sri Madhuri was looking out and she was saying, she said, that's the thing about England. Look how green it is. Look how fat the cows are. <laughs> <laughs> and we were laughing and she was just enjoying and 
I had this burning desire to ask her a question, but I knew that, you know, you didn't ask Sri Maharishi questions. You might have a question in your mind and she would answer it, that type of thing. But I just, finally, I, I couldn't take it anymore. I said, Sri Maharishi, may I ask you a question, please? And she said, yes, it'll be all right. And I said, and I had a, a long history of this. Uh, let me include for instance, William Blake's poem, uh, and did those feet in ancient times walk upon England's mountains green? In other words, he was saying, was Christ in England? So then we investigated and we read books and, and there was a, a very strong theory or more than a theory that he had come to England. And so actually when we, Hillary and I were in Kashmir, we went to, what is supposed to be, what is said to be, and uh, the vibration said to be his grave. Yes. In Kashmir. Yes. But so I said, uh, Sri Maharaji, was Christ in England? Expecting her to give an answer. And instead, she just said, and we were sitting there with our hands like we do in meditation with our hands on our laps, palms up. And instead of answering, she just pointed to my palms, just pointed to my palms and said, see the vibrations. And I've never had stronger vibrations than that day. It was so overwhelming. And that was the answer. But she said, don't tell the English that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She Could said, you please elaborate said, on that? <laughs> she said, but don't don't tell the English. She said it very seriously, like it was something that you wouldn't do, right? She said, but don't tell the English. They think he was born here. <laughs> and then she laughed. <laughs> so, wow. That was, so that, was, that was that remarkable mm. event that happened. And then we went to the program and, uh, in Norwich. Uh -huh. After a program, I think it was that program, we, uh, we all went out for pizza. Uh -huh. And we're, we're in this pizzeria. It's quite late because she's given her normal program, right? It must be 10, 30, 11 each. And there's no, I mean, they're, they're basically closing down for the night. But here comes 30 people, 20 or 30 people. And so they, oh, yeah, well, we'll stay open. That's okay. That's okay. And they brought out the menus and the water and you want to drink and so on and so on. And so we're sitting there and Sri uh, Maharaji wasn't with us at that time. I can't remember. Maybe she had gone to the ladies or was still coming in the car. I don't know. And so we're looking at our menus and we're going, what do you think? Pepperoni? What do you think? This cheese? What do you think? You know, vegetarian, blah, 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 blah. We're all deciding, you know, what we are going to have. So she comes in and she sits down and she says, so what, what's everyone doing? And she says, well, we're deciding. She says, oh, really? Okay. Pepperoni for everyone. That's it. <laughs> oh. Keep it simple. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Which year is this then? Could you please remind us? Um, I think that was 1984. Yeah. 1984. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> so a lesson for the ego. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Good. This has been very, very good <clears throat> recording with you so far, Jim and Hillary. Um, it's it's just such such a delight and joy to listen to Shimataji's stories and that the time you spent with her and how she how graciously she um she she did so much and she's still doing so much for all of us and and yeah don't find the words adequate to express our love and gratitude for Shrimatji. 
Um, so we'll conclude today's session. I'll stop recording now and we will meet yet again. So I'll just stop recording. Thank you so much to Srimataji who has enabled us to have this light that we share and the joy that she has bestowed upon us. And thank you so much for your time today. Jay, thank you. Jay. Thank you.